Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Hope you all have a very blessed weekend this weekend. It is Friday. Yay, we made it to Friday. Now, we're still dealing with this upper level low in the Gulf. I will show you your impacts from that. There will be some wind. There will be some heavy rain. Matter of fact, the GFS don't show it no more. It showed it a few days ago, and the Euro's the only one that's really picking it up right now. It is possible for it to happen today. I will go through what I have for you. That's what I have the videos. The very bottom one, one right above my head, shows the rainfall impacts from Euro. Since Euro is the one that's reading it the best, I think it would be best to show their impacts. The one on the very top is NAM 3K. It's not showing that it's going to go as much into Louisiana as the Euro is showing, but still we have to know every angle and other possibilities. Not only what's happening in the Gulf now, which is posing no threat except some damage and winds possible and some heavier rain. It will not intensify into nothing really big and special, but it's still going to cause problems. And the storm that we have on the East Coast, I show we have bigger problems coming. I show that we still have a, another great chance for the East Coast to have another storm coming with about 60 miles per hour winds with it. It will update. I will update you on all this. Plus, we have a hurricane that is going to pop up on the West Coast of Central America. And we have another possibility for another tropical storm cyclone to come into this gulf of mexico and i will go through everything with you now if you've never been here before hello my name is mark i do upload every single day just not friday from sundown to saturday from sundown that's when i go into my sabbath and usually fridays like today i do later uploads that way i can get the best update i can before i go into my sabbath but make sure you hit that subscribe button. You don't want to miss any videos, especially going into this hurricane season, which is expected to be even more intense now. There has been an update, according to NOAA. Now, right now, we do have this storm off the east coast in the Atlantic, and we do have this trying to be a storm in the Gulf, which would be at least probably a tropical depression for a little while. Now, yesterday, NOAA did update their website. And they did upgrade the 2021 hurricane season expectations now they are predicting that we now we have a 60 percent chance of above normal season now they're saying for 2021 a likely range of 13 to 20 named storms that's winds at least 39 miles per hour or higher six of ten could become hurricanes which is 74 miles per hour or higher and including three to five category three four or five major hurricanes could happen from june 1st all the way to november 30th and they are showing a lot of confidence that this is going to ramp up and i show it's already getting started guys as a matter of fact if you look at the velocity potential for the next 45 days you can see right around the end of may the beginning of june mostly the end of may we have a very we have a very strong potential velocity anomaly that will be happening somewhere in our caribbean atlantic ocean area and then sometime around the beginning of june from the beginning of June all the way to the early teens, we have another possible anomaly. They're not only in the Atlantic, but now we're showing two other anomalies that could be popping up for the Caribbean area. Plus, the beginning of July, we show a very strong anomaly that's starting to brew up in the MDR. Now, here's our two systems that we have so far on radar, 90L and 91L. And the storm that we have on the East Coast is back up to 90%. It's been going back and forth, 90, 80. Now it's back to 90. It is on a strengthening phase. I believe it will get to a tropical depression. I do believe it will be a tropical storm before it gets on a weakening phase and leaves. And the one that's in the Gulf of Mexico, it is on a little bit of a strengthening phase, but it's getting ripped apart. We have a low pressure system spinning counterclockwise this way. We have a low pressure system, upper level low, spinning counterclockwise over here. And we also got a big high pressure that's spinning clockwise in this direction. So it's pulling all these winds all the way from this low pressure over into the Gulf, and this low pressure is spinning it around. So all the winds is going across Florida, and then when this spins around counterclockwise, it's going to bring all the winds and the precipitation into Louisiana and Texas on that clockwise motion. It's all going on a veer like this. However, I'm showing this system only has about 6 to 12 more hours to do anything, which it may get down to a 1,006, so it's not really going to be anything intensified. It will intensify a little bit. Most of the rain I'm showing will be off in the Gulf of Mexico, but there will be some on land, and there will be some winds. And literally within 18 hours, it's going to lose its chance. So according to the Euro, there is a chance for it to get down to a 1,012 millibar pressure before it goes on land and pretty much becomes nothing. And as you can see, the next shot over is back to upper level low again. 
And one of the main reasons both of these systems will not do anything is because of the temperatures. You need at least 80 degrees Fahrenheit for tropical cyclones to grow in strength and to stay alive. And you can see right here in the Gulf where it's at, 26 uh, degrees Celsius is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's right on the edge of the 26. That's why it's able to strengthen a little bit why it came from the west or western side of Gulf of Mexico. So not only is it going to get torn apart from the low-level winds from the high pressure that's revolving down there, it's also going into colder waters where it's not going to be growing any more strength. And it's just going to get suffocated and it will die out. As well as the one that's in the Atlantic, it is over very cool waters and 80 degrees Fahrenheit is way down here or a little bit along the coast. There's no way this is going to do anything either. It will be, it will start going on a weakening trend later on this afternoon. And when I look at the ensemble for possible cyclone locations as far as the systems go with the low pressures, as far as the millibars go, the lowest it gets is 1,005 millibars. And that's the lowest possibility it has within 12 hours. After that, chances go back down to 1,014 as it slowly dies off. Now this will bring some winds, but it do have some high 40 miles per hour wind gusts that's in the Gulf. It will go by today. It will affect Louisiana a little bit. Then as it turns for later on this afternoon into the early morning, it will turn towards Texas. And it'll, not only is this rain coming in, but you will have these wind gusts that will come up to 38 to 40 something miles per hour wind gusts for a chance as it moves on shore and moves away. So by 1 p.m. today, you do have a chance for high 30 miles per hour wind gusts going across Lafayette, Homa, and Lake Charles. And I'm sorry to say Lake Charles, it looks like you could be the bullseye as well as Beaumont once again for some heavier rainfall. As you go through the day, you see by 7 p.m., it's still in the 30s, but it does move by early morning hours over towards Texas, and now you're in the lower 20s, and it just weakens. By 7 p.m. tonight, Beaumont's getting uh, 20s, Galveston's getting almost 30 or a little above miles per hour wind gusts. But by 1 o'clock in the morning, now you're going to be getting 40s, uh, pretty good 40s, and 38 or more miles per hour wind gusts going through Houston as well. Then when you go to 7 a.m., it's still going to be there at least 40 miles per hour wind gusts as this passes by for about 6 to 8 hours. And as you get a look, you can see that later on this afternoon, it does wind back down to 1,014 millibars. Not only low-level winds, which is shearing it off, you have this high pressure that has been moving in and growing greatly for these last couple of days, and it is going to push these storms further to the west. So at the same time, it's, bring, it's pushing this back. It's not going to be able to get any growth. But at the same time, you have these surface low pressures, upper level lows on the western side of the U.S. that is going to be putting all this energy going around this high pressure going up to the central and northern U.S. Now, this will bring a lot of winds. The pressure from this high pressure squeezing in towards these low pressures with a high pressure on the western side of the U.S., this squeeze will cause some high winds, some damaging winds that will go across definitely the four corners southwest into the central U.S. So later on this afternoon, right around you getting some winds around Louisiana before it switches over towards Texas, you have a big bunch of 40 to 50 miles per hour, even 60, 66, 69 right there. Especially for Arizona and going through New Mexico, there's going to be some very high winds coming with this system. And so far, I'm showing by 6 o'clock tonight, Flagstaff could get anywhere from 76 miles per hour wind gusts. Definitely the high 60s, but I'm definitely seeing high wind gusts, especially for Flagstaff. So y'all need to be watch out for the next 24 hours. Now, as this system sits in the Gulf and spins for a little bit before it gets shredded apart, it will bring a lot of precipitation. All these winds and a lot of this energy is bringing from this low pressure, circled around by the high pressure, and swallowed back up from this low pressure going to the west. So all this moisture, all this train of precipitation will happen for a while. Within the first 24 hours, this is a rainfall that can be expected as it goes to the Midwest. And you can see the little where the eye of circulation was trying to go in the Gulf. 48 hours, it's expecting more rainfall. This is all from the Euro. Three days, it's going to spread a little bit more towards Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas. Just in the next 24 hours, it is showing that it is getting a heavy amount in southern Louisiana the most. And all the way from 7 p.m. tonight to 7 p.m. tomorrow night, it's showing it possible for 7 inches for your Lake Charles, but definitely 4 inches coming your way. Beaumont, Texas, over an inch. Lafayette, another 2 inches as it moves more north. Shreveport, another chance for 2 inches, as well as Alexandria. But once again, Lake Charles looks like you're in a hot spot. Now, around the end of the month, if you remember, we had an anomaly of possible 
from the 27th, somewhere around there, towards the end of the month, towards the beginning of the month, of possibilities. Now, I'm showing we have two. Not only do we have this low pressure system that's meeting up on the East Coast, we also have another pressure system coming by Central America. And as you go through your times and see what's going on, first the one on the East Coast, it gets blocked by high pressure as it comes out. So it's going to bobble around for a couple of days, not knowing what it wants to do before it finally, so far, leaves out. We don't know if that's going to be true or not. It does stay there for quite some time, all the way to the 5th. So about a week is going to bobble around. And since it's still a little bit far away, this could do even more damage. This could be closer. It could be stronger. It really could be an issue. We definitely need to watch for that area around that time. At the same time, towards the end of the month, coming out by west of Central America, and it does strengthen so far to 364 millibars by the end of the month. And that's right off the west coast of Mexico. There's a better look at the one on the east coast, possibility for the 27th as it comes out, gets blocked by high pressure, and then it just bobbles around for a while, which is very dangerous, especially in our hurricane season, for any pressure system to be hanging around and bobbling around. So we definitely have to keep our eye on this thing to make sure it doesn't strengthen into something that we need to worry about. And here's another look just so you can see kind of how close it gets to the coastline and it's being so far away and usually something so far away it moves a little bit more as it gets closer to that time. So this could be a East Coast problem. We just need to get a little bit closer. And as we look at the ensemble members to see if this is trending with other models, this is the Euro showing it now. You can see on the western of Central America, we do get a surface low pressure over here. But also we get another one as that veers away and becomes, I'll show you, hurricane strength. We get another surface low pressure that forms up right next to Central America, as well as upper level lows all off the coast. And this surface low pressure actually makes its way towards the Yucatan and the Gulf of Mexico. So we got to find out exactly where it's going to go. It is trending through a few models and it is strengthening as it goes. And around the beginning of next month, where, right where you saw the other anomaly form up, you can see you start getting a little cluster of storms in the Gulf. And it does get pretty severe and localized. Matter of fact, they get very much to where it gets an upper level low and it could become a problem. It's still a little too far away. Right now it shows that it don't form up and become anything. However, we need to keep our eyes on this. This being so far away, I guarantee the outcome will be different. And this is by the GFS. So the GFS and the Euros perturbed members both show that around the end of this month, towards the beginning of next month, we're going to have something else going towards the Yucatan, towards the Gulf. And a possible rainfall shows some very heavy rainfall amounts in the Gulf and towards southern Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, as this upper level low surface low pressure comes onto our shore later on. So we need an update on that. And for the one that we have off the East Coast, it is predicted that it will be a strong tropical storm, extra tropical, which means it won't be a compact tropical storm like we've seen in the Caribbean. It's just off into the Atlantic. A lot of space, but has a chance to get wide as big, but that's an extra tropical. But it has a chance for maximum winds for 58 miles per hour and 69 miles per hour wind gusts. And that's the most potential that we're showing out of it, with this, most of the spaghetti models showing that it will go off into the north and the east. There's a couple that shows it could swing in to the northeast, however, that's highly unlikely, especially with the front coming down, it's going to smash it away. Now, for our one that we have in the Gulf right now, it is showing that it has a good chance of getting 9 miles per hour motion speed going on shore, but only 29 miles per hour max winds. And that's not enough for a tropical storm. It's enough for a tropical depression, just not enough for a tropical storm. And they have been wind rallies done by NOAA, and it's only showing chances of 6 to 8, 7 miles per hour wind speed. So it's, they don't have no serious wind speed moving with this. It has been checked out. But it will go and curve around uh, Texas, become upper level low again, and go to the Midwest. At the same time, you're going to have all these storms tracking in from Louisiana into Texas for tomorrow as this low, low pressure upper level low moves more further to the west from the high pressure and brings y'all some rainfall. So for Louisiana, I'm showing to about 10 o'clock tonight. You're going to continue to have storms mostly on western Louisiana, Lafayette, uh, Lake Charles, Alexandria. Y'all going to be having storms to about 10, 11 o'clock tonight. 
And then after that, about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, the storms are going to shift over to Houston as the storms move further on land. And tomorrow morning, Houston is going to have storms in the morning. Not a lot of heavy rainfall I'm showing, but you will have storms in the morning as the system moves on shore to at least five, 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon. When you check for absolute vorticity at 800 millibar level, you can see our little anomaly in the Gulf of Mexico. It does try and spin up, but it gets shredded into pieces literally as it comes on shore. And not only for our storm that is also off into the Atlantic of the East Coast, you can see it forms up real nice, then it moves away. But remember, I showed you we have another little possibility, and towards the end of the month, here it comes, it spins, gets blocked by a high pressure. Wiggles around for a couple of days. We still don't know what this is going to do. We got to wait and see. It's still up in the air. It's a possibility. But at the same time that that possibility comes on the East Coast for next time towards the end of the month, we do have this one off the West Coast of Central America. And it will form up and be a nasty little strong storm. And you can see it in the vorticity. It even gets a dark blue in there. It does go away. I don't see it going over Mexico for any further problems. However, if you look at the vorticity strength, it's getting so strong, it's getting blue. <laughs> as well as that next anomaly that comes in, body Yucatan into the Gulf towards the beginning of the next month, you see how it does get some vorticity. It tries to group up. So it must be a high pressure around around that time, just ripping it to shreds while it's trying to group up but it does get some vorticity going so we need to watch out for this thing this could easily form up to be something much much stronger bless you so when i check to see what the strength is of these possible cyclones coming into the future this is right around the 27th and right off the east coast you see it break in and then it spins and it don't quite know what it wants to do. While you have this one also coming off of Central America, we'll go through that as well. But as this system strengthen up and strengthen up and get together, this is your 10 meter winds. This controls whether it becomes a named system or not, if it has sustained winds. And I'm showing by the 29th that this actually does get up to 47 miles per hour. 10 meter winds sustained. So we need to watch out for this. This is a possibility for the next system to brew up across the East Coast. And it is strengthening up pretty nice. It does get a center of location. I do see a clear eye of the storm. So we will see what it becomes. Even when you go a little further to where it has a good center of location where it's all the way around the eye of the storm. That way it can say that it is holding strength. It is forming up. This is on the 29th still, and it's 37, 38 miles per hour, 10 meter winds. So it's still showing that it does have strength to be a tropical storm, whether weak or high end. It is showing that it is strong enough to do that. We definitely need to watch out for this. This will be coming towards the end of the month. Where it's going to be, we need to update. And for the one off Central America to see exactly what the intensity could be on that one, because that one does get really, really strong. It looks like the strongest is somewhere around the 31st, somewhere around the 31st, and this is your 10 meter winds. So let's see what the power is. 82 miles per hour, 85 I saw there, 90. We have a 90 miles per hour hurricane that will be going into the Pacific, but is, is grouping up by the west side of Central America and, and being where it's still at the end of the month this could easily be in a different location it could easily be a different intensity before I did this run the run I did yesterday it showed intensity but it showed it doing a sharp turn towards Mexico so I'm showing different anomalies with this we do need to keep this updated to make sure there is no problems for Central America for, for Mexico for anybody as this strong hurricane comes in at the end of this month, beginning of next month. And the next one that shows a possibility for the Gulf in the beginning of next month as well. It does get a center of the storm right here with a little bit of winds with it. This is right around the 4th. 32 miles per hour, that is literally a tropical depression. And as you go 6 hours further, 33 miles per hour. So there is a moment where it does strengthen. Then as you go a little bit further, is back 
still at 33 miles per hour. So there is a 12 to 18 hour period where this does strengthen, it does get a center of location. We just need to, a little more update. So far it's in the Gulf, but we all seen these things. Sometimes it spins into the Gulf, being so long away, sometimes it spins off towards the Bahamas and goes in Atlantic. We just need an update. Now I'm gonna play this on the NAND 3K, that way you can see it all come from the Gulf all the way around through its full phase all the way to the Midwest. I do have it on loop, so you'll see it also. This is an NAND 3K for 60 hours. So all you're going to see is the next two and a half days. At the same time, I'd like to say God bless all of you. I appreciate y'all taking the time and coming to my channel today. If you've never been here before, this is the best part of my channel. This is where we praise God. Amen. Hebrews 3. Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, Consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. For this man was counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who hath built the house hath more honor than the house. For every house is built by some man, but he that built all things is God. And Moses verily was faithful in all his house, as a servant for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house are we? If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always error in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swear in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief and departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called to you today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter and because of unbelief. Amen. Believe, guys. He died for our sins. He was dead three days and raised. Amen. Believe all of it. God bless all of you. Hope you have a very blessed weekend, a very happy and safe Friday. I'll see you again on Sunday. All glory does go to God, God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs>